Okay, the ambiguous case, or the ambiguous case of the sign law. He's trying to teach a lesson. Like the skin yeah. Please, now let me more. Okay, so uh, let's solve for theta if sine theta were 0 0.8333. So let's say you've been doing a sine law problem and you ended up with sine theta was 0 0.8333. Then the way that we would solve this is to say, well, the sine of the reference angle, and then we make this number positive. If it isn't, it already is, but. We said we want to find the reference angle, so we're going to do the sine of theta equals the positive value for this. We're then going to use our calculator to work out the inverse sine. And let's do this so uh, to the nearest tenth, let's say. So 0 0.8333 is 56.4 degrees. <laughs> So we don't have okay, so since the original sign was positive, we know we have a quadrant one angle and a quadrant two angle for theta. So in quadrant one, it's just 56.4. And in quadrant two, it would be a reference angle of 56.4, leading to the rotation angle of 180 minus that which is what, 132.6 or something? 131.6. OK. So that's just basic stuff. You'd be expected to do that on the quiz. Well, except you're not using a calculator, so it would be an exact value so you could actually find it. On the quiz, no calculator, right? But uh, if I asked you if sine theta were root 3, negative root 3 over 2, I would expect to be able to do this, right? OK, so how does that relate to what's this ambiguous case? Well, the thing is, if we have a triangle, and we have an angle and two sides. So we're saying, look, here's an angle of 30 degrees, and this side off the angle is 20. And I want to hang another side down from here, opposite little a, or opposite angle a, which will be little a. And let's see what happens. And so I have for you the, the physical thing. This is the sign law demonstrator. So I have this fixed length side here and this fixed angle down here, right? And I'm just using the ruler because you can kind of see. And if I draw the third side, if it's too short, I cannot make a triangle, right? If I say, hey, this side needs to be this long, too short, can't make a triangle. If it hangs straight down, then I can make one triangle where it's this long. But if it's longer, like this, let's say off balance, ignore the little swinging side at the bottom there. If this side is this long, I can make two triangles. So I can have a nice acute triangle, acute angle down here, or this angle could be in here to make a triangle. Okay? So it's possible with this particular side length that I can make two triangles. And that's where the ambiguous case comes in. It says there might be more than one possible triangle that you can make with the given information. So what we're going to do is pop over to this web page, not this web page, but pop over to this web page. On non-right triangles, side-side angle, the ambiguous case. So that's the first one that's on your thing, right? We've got angle A is, we've got this fixed angle here. We've got this side, which can be as long as we want. So see, I can just manipulate this. And you see here, that third side is too short, right? It won't reach, so you can't make it. When it hits 10, then we have one triangle, right? 
you see that meets. And I can show you two things. So the circle that determines it, and that's just basically, uh, on this thing, it's just the, the side of this length rotates around, right? It can create a circle. We're interested, where does that circle intersect the baseline? In this case, only in that one spot. So we can make one triangle out of this. And if we want to show the angle, we can show that the angle is 90 degrees. Okay. Now we could calculate that. Again, we could use sine law to calculate that. We could say if this side is 10, then sine 30 over 10 is equal to sine of this angle over 20 and solve. Okay. Now in this case, it solves for us, so you know, I think we can live with that. <coughs> okay, let's unshow these. Uh, what's the next side length that we want to look at? 8. Okay, so if we go to 8, or actually anything, basically anything less than 10, we can see that side is too small. Right? And no matter how we rotate that side, and that would be show the circle determining it, right? I mean, if you have a length of 8 coming off of this point here, it just won't reach. We can't form a triangle. Okay, so what's the next side? So there's no solution to that. What's the next length? 12. Now, notice when I get over 10, all of a sudden you can see two triangles there, right? So as I go to 12, I can get there, stay. Okay, so there's 12. And you can see that if you drew a circle with radius 12 off of point B, that it would intersect that base line in two places, creating two possible triangles, right? And I can show you the solutions for them which are 56.4 degrees and 123.6 degrees. <coughs> Not surprisingly, the numbers we already worked out in that first example, right? But it says that if you did sine 30 over 12 equals sine C over 20, and did the inverse sine, it would give you 56.4 degrees, but you have to be aware that, hey, wait a sec, not only is it possible that this angle is 56.4, it's also possible that it's 123.6. So we can make two triangles. Who's that, your boyfriend? Ew. <laughs> okay, so two possible triangles. So we see that we have the ambiguous. Okay, do we have any other lengths to do? Those are the two angles. After 12, what is there? 25. So. Now, okay, let's start making this side bigger. Now, as we make it bigger, this is going to get longer. This is going to get to be a steeper angle, right? Greater than 123 until we hit. So, you know, we can, whoops. Come on. So 13, you see that angle is 134, 138. Now, obviously, when it hits 20, then I can no longer have this triangle here, right? The one with the red dashed line because it's going to be on top. So 19.9 is good. I got a really high angle there, 149.8, and this angle is 0 0.2 degrees. And now it disappears. And then as I make this side bigger, we only have one triangle. That's 30. Okay. I thought we Yeah, we want 25. But we can see that it would also work with 30. I could also make this longer. It really could be any length. It's just going to, you know, this, this is going to get longer, 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 and have a smaller angle down here. You can see there's 19 and a half. And as I move it back down, then that angle gets bigger. And so at 25, so you have a solution, you can see that it's 23.6 degrees, right? So there's only one possible solution. So we can have no solutions, right? This side is too short, just cannot make a triangle. One solution where this is actually formed in a 90 degree angle, this comes exactly down and hits, and two solutions where this side is longer and can hit that base side in two different places, creating two possible triangles. And that's why we say it's, it's ambiguous, right? Well, maybe it's 53.6. Actually, it's both. There are two answers, okay? Okay, so we've worked through this page, right? The ambiguous case may occur when you're using the sine law to determine an unknown angle. It won't happen if you have an unknown side. Okay, so think, what does the sine law look like? A over sine A is B. Let's just use two of them. Okay, if, now I need a known pair, right? You have to have a pair that you know. 
if I know this angle, then that solves only for one thing, right? This angle's fixed, this angle, because actually if I know this angle, then I also know this angle, right? That's a given, if you know that, you know that. So you know all three angles. There's no possibility of having a different size triangle, right? It's when you know, and so usually we solve like this. If we're looking for angles, Okay, so if I know this, I know that pair, I don't know this angle here, I don't know C, and if I know this side here, that's when we get the ambiguous case, because depending on what this angle is, the calculation of this angle, you know, depends on these two. So if this changes, if it can be 53.6 or 123.4, that changes this angle as well. Okay, so will not happen if you're... Uh, trying to determine an unknown side, right? It's only if you're determining an unknown angle. If the unknown angle is opposite the smaller of the two known sides, okay? So we know two sides. Remember, we know two sides, right? You've got that and you've got this side. If we know the two sides, if you have the smaller of the two sides, then you know that that has to be an acute angle, right? Like if the largest side Largest side is opposite the largest angle, right? We know that in a triangle. Largest side, largest angle, smallest side, smallest angle, middle side, middle angle, in, angle in between. So <coughs> if the larger side is obtuse, then the other two sides must be acute, okay? If the largest side is acute, then the other two sides are also acute, right? Like a 60, 60, 60, or a 70, uh, 70, 40, 30. No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> 70, 40, and whatever. Another 70. Uh, so if your angle is opposite the smaller of the two known sides, there's only one solution because this means that theta has to be acute. If the angle is opposite the larger of the two known sides, then it's one of three possibilities. If sine theta equals 1, which means theta equals 90 degrees, there's only one solution. There's no solution if sine theta is greater than 1. And that's where you've got that side, but it's too short, right? It can't actually reach down. And there are two solutions if sine, sine theta is between 0 and 1, okay? So you have to be the opposite, the larger of the two known sides. So you don't know, maybe the side's acute, maybe it's obtuse. Uh, we have to investigate that. Okay, so we're going to do triangle PQR. We're going to determine angle P. If we know that angle R is 110, little r is 16, and P is 10. Now, since this angle is obtuse, I know the other two angles must be acute. When I solve this for angle P, I don't bother with, oh, it could be this or this, right? I know it's just the acute angle, right? Because, uh, you know, anything else added on to this would make it greater than 180. All right, so let's just draw a picture of this. I'm going to draw sort of the infinite side there, the long side. This will be angle R, which will be 110 degrees. Okay, let's just say this is our triangle. We'll call this P. So this is 16. This is 10. Let's call that Q. That'll be little Q. Let's clean this up a bit. We want to work out angle P. We know that it has to be an acute angle, right? It can't be obtuse. You can't have two angles over 90 in a triangle because they would be too big. It would add up to too big. Okay, formula. We're solving for an angle. We write sine P over P and sine R over R because we're going for the uh, known pair, which is angle R and side R. The <coughs> sine of angle P is P times sine R over little r. I always like to do my uh, rearrangement of the formula without the numbers in. And then go angle P is the inverse sine of, and now we can put numbers in, so little p is 10 times the sine of 110 degrees over 16. And we plug that into the kid who left his calculators here some time ago, his calculator. This one's actually pretty, uh, I don't know, angle piece. How much do you think this, this is actually pretty new, so I, I think it's good. Can I have it then? No, no, but you may not. One of these days, the guy's going to come back in and say, yeah, I'm going to lift my calculator. Oh, just tell him I have it. 35.9.
So call it 36.0 degrees. So we know it's 36, or it's 180 minus 36, which is 144, but it can't be 144 because then these two angles would add up to 250 something, and the angles of a triangle only add up to 180, right? So since we already have the largest side, we're looking at the smaller of the two known sides, it means that that angle must be acute, okay? Even if this angle were under 90, Right? It's still opposite, it's still largest angle, so this angle has to be smaller. So if this is obtuse, this has to be acute, it's got to be smaller. And even if this is acute, it's still opposite, this angle has to be smaller than that angle. So it would also have to be acute. Right? So that's one possibility. And in this case, there's only one triangle, although it is ambiguous case, right? I mean, P could be 144, but we know P can't be, so let's just tuck that in there. And let's take a look at the next one. First of all, any questions on that one? Yeah. Right. So just one angle, because this angle is already obtuse, we need a smaller angle. The other angle has to be acute. So we don't need to go and work this out. Right. Say, oh, it could also be 144. OK, angle R is 70 degrees. So let's come up with something that looks like 70 degrees. That's angle R. Little r is 11. P is 15. There's angle P, that's Q, there's little Q. Okay, so in this case, we know that angle P, comma, if it exists, comma, must be greater than 70 degrees, right? Because if the 70 degrees is opposite a side of 11, a side of 15 has to be open even more. Okay, same deal, right? Sine P over P equals sine r over r. We like to write this out all the time because tomorrow you're going to learn the cosine law and then when you're solving a, a non-right angle triangle, you're going to show which one you're using. I'm using the sine law to get an angle or I'm using the cosine law to get an angle. Okay, so we need to show the formula. Uh, sine of p, so sine of p is p sine r. P sine r, so angle P is equal to the inverse sine of, so P, 15, times the sine of 70 degrees over 11. So P equals <coughs> second <coughs> sine inverse. You should be doing this on your own calculator. Right? Make sure you're typing stuff in right, divided by 11, and I get error. No solution. So actually, forget this sine inverse. Let's just, what, what is 15 sine 70? So 15 sine 70 divided by 11. That's 1.28. Well, that's bigger than 1, right? And we know that sines have to be between 1 and negative 1. So there is no angle P, right? In other words, the case that we have here is that third side is just too short, right? That Q, we, we, can't, we can't make a side Q that will actually fit in there if there's a 70 degree angle, right? Or actually, sorry, the 11 really is too short. That won't reach, if that's a 70 degree angle, it's pretty steep up, right? And then <coughs> this distance down is longer than 11. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, it's not the answer is an error, so there is no answer, right? There is no triangle that can be formed. Sure, that's perfectly fair. Good multiple choice question, right? This angle is this many degrees, this many can't be found, right? There is no triangle. Um, R is 40 degrees, angle R is 12, and little p is 14. So this would be the ambiguous case, right? We know that little p has to be bigger than 40 degrees, right? because it's a longer side than the side that's opposite the 40 degrees, right? So if 40 degree opening gives you a side of 12, then you're gonna open a little bit further. Okay, same deal, right? Sine of P over little p, sine of R over little r. Oh, sure, we should draw this, so. Let's move that down while we draw. Uh, okay, so angle R is 40 degrees. 
Little r is 12. There's p. This is 14. There's q and little q. Okay, so let's let's extend the page. Move that down. Okay, so sine p is p sine r over little r. Angle P is the inverse sine of P, so 14 sine 40 over 12. Okay, inverse sine 14 sine 40 divided by 12, 48.6 degrees. Okay, so that makes sense, right? We know that angle P has to be bigger than angle R because it's opposite a larger side. So it could be 48.6. But it could also be 180 minus 48.6. Because we know that there are two possible angles when you do a sine, and that's 131.4 degrees. Okay, since angle R was 110 degrees, you cannot have two angles over 100 degrees, right? So when this angle came out as 36, the other angle would be 144. You can't have a 110 degree angle and a 144 degree angle in the same triangle. As long as it's like less than 90. So we know, since that's greater than 90, we know this has to be less than 90. Right? We also know that since side P is smaller than R, then angle P has to be smaller than angle R. Therefore, there's only one angle that it can be. We don't need to look for the second angle. In B, <clears throat> well, we just found out there's no solution, so there's no point looking for the other non-solution. Well, let's do 180 minus no solution, right? So we couldn't find an angle. You stop at that point, right? What else is there to look for? So in C... Two things are going on here, right? This is a longer side than this. So we know that the angle has to be bigger than 40 degrees. 48.6 fits that. But 131.4 also fits that. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at two possible triangles, right? Here, let's draw them out. So here's one. So this is 40 degrees. This side is going to be 48.6. Uh, that's 14, that's 12, that's R, that's P, that's Q, that's P, that's R. That adds up to 88.6. So 0.4 will take me to 89. And then 1 will take me to 90. So that'll be 91.4 degrees, right? Because the three angles have to add up to 180. So that's one of the possible triangles. The other possible triangle is where this side that's 12 is actually swung in. So here's the 40 degrees. That's 14. This is 12 here. And as a matter of fact, let me clear the bottom of this because I won't be able to write in. The, okay, that's 40 degrees. This is 131.4 degrees. Right? These two add up to 171.4. So this will be 8.6 degrees. So that's the other possible triangle, right? You can have an obtuse angle, right? And that's the idea of this, where the third side. So the third side swings out, and I've got this acute angle down here. Or the third side comes in, and I've got this obtuse angle here. That angle is bigger than so, right? so you've got those two possibilities. That's why we call it the ambiguous case, right? We don't know. It could be both, right? It's either. Actually, it is both. There are two solutions, and we have to. For these questions, you don't try to solve for the length of the bottom thing. Depends what you're asked to solve for. Right now, we were only asked to solve for angle P, right? Okay? So we've done that. So let's move this aside. <laughs> move this aside. Join that Move this aside. Move this aside. Actually, I guess I can group that and then move the whole thing. 
Okay, let's do this one. Angle R is 30 degrees. <laughs> this will have an exact value. Any other angle other than 30, 45, or 60 does not have an exact value. So you can't use exact values. Oh, sorry. I thought you were asking me. I don't know. You, you were asking a question. It was loud. I thought it was for me. So I answered it. All right. Too bad you weren't listening because you would have got the answer. Okay, so here's our triangle, right? Same deal. Sine P over P is equal to sine of R over R. So da, 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 and it becomes P is equal to the inverse sine of uh, 14 sine 30 degrees over 7. So P is equal to 90 degrees, right? Because that's a half. 14 times a half is 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. And the inverse sine of 1 is 90 degrees. So really, it looks like this. There is only one solution. That's side Q. This is angle P, which turns out to be a 90 degree triangle. Yeah, how did you know that it was one solution? Because angle P was 90 degrees, and that's only the one solution, right? So the, the, the third side is long enough to just reach, right? It's not too short. That's no solution, right? Too short means you do the inverse sign, you get error. Mm -hmm. well, okay, I can't find an angle, okay? Longer than it needs to be, longer, just long enough to reach means that it's dropped straight down, right? And so it's a 90 degree angle. Longer than that means that it can swing in both ways, right? It either, it's longer than this side here, so it can come in like this or it can go out like that. And that gives you the two cases, okay? So it has to be, Opposite the, the angle we're looking for has to be opposite the longest side that we're given. If that's the case, then we know that, well, either it's one solution or two solutions or no solutions. I mean, it's that. If it's not opposite the longest side we're given, then we know there's only one solution, right? That angle has to be smaller. It has to be acute. I only need to look for one solution here. <clears throat> now, then we get to Lazar's question, kind of, which was, well, what about solving the triangle? Okay, so if we say solve this triangle, because it's likely what we're going to ask you to do, right, is here, solve this triangle. And you're going to have to realize that, <clears throat> oh, when I go to solve this triangle, uh, since it's the ambiguous case of the sine law, or it's a problem that involves the ambiguous case of the sine law, we may have to look for two solutions here, right? So we know that angle A is 40 degrees. One that we had. Actually, okay. So this is part C, really, right? So we actually already have sort of partly solved this. <coughs> so we're doing part C. We have these two possible angles for B, right? Which we've already worked out. So let's just take them, okay? So we're just going to take this, transfer it to the other page, and say we know that angle P. Angle P is equal to, what was it, 48.6 and 131.4? So 48.6 or 131.4. Oh, wait, sorry. This is ABC. This will be angle B. Okay, so what do we say? This was 91.4. Uh, we're going to call this A. This will be B. This will be C. This will be little c. Little b is 14. Little a is 12. So we've solved this triangle for angle B. We use that to get angle C. Right, we did that on the previous page. But we've got angle C was 91.4. We now need to find side little c, right? And it's going to be the longest of the three sides because it's across from the biggest of the three angles. 
So we're going to use the formula, little c over sine c, because this time we're solving for a side, is equal to little a over sine a. So little c is equal to a sine c. And again, I, that's just me. I just like to do my rearrangements with the formula before I substitute in. And now we write it down. So little c is 12 sine 91.4 degrees over sine 40 degrees. And we'll give that to the nearest tenth. So 12 sine 91.4 divided by sine 40 is 18.7. And there's no units on this, right? So there's no units in the question. We don't put any units on the answer. You can't even put units. You could write units if you liked. The units are units. Not to be. Okay, or we've got triangle ABC where this is 40 degrees, <coughs> this one is 131.4 degrees, and I think we calculated this on the previous page to be 8.6 degrees. Right? So, again, ambiguous case, right? The unknown angle is opposite the larger side. That leads to no solution, one solution, or two solutions. And we need to look for the two solutions in this case. Which means when you find the angle, the other angle is supplementary, right? These two guys have to add to 180, right? Because it's basically just the reference angle in quadrant one and quadrant two. That's the thing with sine, right? It's positive in quadrant one, it's also positive in quadrant two. Okay, we want to work out little c. We're going to do the same thing here, right? So c is equal to a sine c over sine a. Little c is a, so a was uh, 12 and b was 14. So 12 sine 8.6 degrees over sine 40 degrees. Now, seeing as this is the smallest angle by far, actually, then side, that side little c is going to be the smallest side, right? And it should be substantially smaller than the 14 or the 12. Uh, so what do we get? 12 sine 8.6 divided by sine 40. 2.79, so call it 2.8 units. So we have two possible triangles, right? If we want to summarize, we could say uh, angle A is 40 degrees. Angle B was 48.6 degrees. Angle C was 91.4 degrees. Little A was whatever little A was, 12. Little B is 14. And little C is 18.7. And over here, angle A, still 40 degrees. Angle B, 131.4 degrees. Angle C, 8.6 degrees. Little A, still 12. Little B, still 14. And little C, 2.8. Okay. So two possible triangles. There will be an ambiguous case of the sine law question on the test, probably on the third cube, probably on the final exam as well, right? Pretty much guaranteed, right? So it's just understanding where, what are the sides, how do they relate to the angles, am I looking for, you know, then that first one, it was just, well, that, that's opposite, that angle's opposite a smaller side. It has to be an acute angle, there's only one solution, if at all, right? And then knowing, well, when can there be two solutions, right? When the unknown angle is opposite an unknown sine. If you have a choice when you're using the sine law and you're finding an angle, like if we just say arbitrarily, hey, here's, you know, here's a diagram of a triangle, solve it. If you're using the sine law to solve and you have a choice, always go for the angle across from the smallest side because you know it has to be acute and you're not worried about is this an ambiguous case problem. 
right? So if you have a choice, depending on the information given, right? If you give it, get all three angles or something, you have a choice, solve for an angle that you know must be acute because it's opposite one of the two smaller signs. Did you say for given all angles, solve for? If, if you've got all, all three angles, so if you've given two of the angles and you have to solve, yeah. right, I guess you're not solving for the third. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Let's just say if, if you have a choice to solve, so all right, you're not given all three angles. If you're given all three sides and you're trying to find the angle and you're given one other one, you're using the sign law. Go for the angle opposite the smallest side that you can find because it will be acute. That just, it just makes it easier, right? Yeah. So, no, that's fine. I mean, you're right. Solve for what you know is.